singing show that we make you sing and you taste buds when all we want for you to see is how we're living in a blessed country. Welcome to the world of the Singing Chef. Guys, uh, thank you for coming to the Singing Chef show. And my name is Eon John and I'm your Singing Chef. Okay, look how sm Pan is like smoking here saying, give me something to do. This one's heating up too as well, right? So we got a lot here to do. Um, you know what? I can turn these off because they're heated up now. We're making pan fried mackerel. You see this beautiful mackerel that you can get here in Ghana? Um, I'm going to fillet, for, fillet it for you, but before I do that, we're going to do our, our white bean, which um, like cannellini beans and black eyed peas. And I'm going to make a, what's the lovely name you gave me for it, my dear? Casserole. Casserole, yes, instead of stew. It's more like a casserole, it's got a roll. Okay, great. Okay, so our, we got the smoke. Yes, I, I love it. good work. You see, that's when you know that your work is working. Let's put in a little bit of coconut oil. This goes really quick. Right? So that's macro, macro with a, basically a bean casserole. And I just love doing stuff like this. Hey. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to put everything in in very very quick succession succession we have our garlic knoblauch layer uh, let me just take this baby down got to be gentle with this part oh yes we're gonna toast it off this is like casserole real creole style boy okay right um right i'm gonna put some Little, uh, you know, them little short salt shrimp. We gotta do that. The weary, weary. We're we gonna put in there. I've got some fennel seeds here, which just goes really beautifully with macro. You know, you don't have to do that, but I would advise that you do. Okay. Black pepper. We need a lot of that. And then bay leaves. Take the bay leaves in. And don't waste time, we put in the black eyed peas. Swirl that around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we already put the weary and black eye and, and black um, and, you know um, black pepper in there. So and it just gives this this oil a really lovely flavor. I love that. Then I'm gonna put the rest of the beans there, which is the white beans, the cannellini beans, and you get this. So this is going to be our carbs today. Fabulous. Make sure that gets really nicely covered. And I love it. I can see the bits of the um, fennel seeds in there. That's just going to... And I'm just using that. In a little while, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of the big leaf, broad leaf thyme. I'm going to chop that up in a second. But I want this to just cook. I really want it to get fennelly you know you just wanted to marriage it and like i tell you about a, a lot of cooking a large part of cooking is actually patience and uh, you know when you get people that they just want to throw everything in the pot and then it's going to work it probably isn't it's you know it's about it's about when you put things in and how long things are going to cook so we get used to this as you get more experience cooking right i'm just going to do a bit of salt in there and you could see these beans creating the, this, that's just that beautiful aioli, that lovely thing. And aioli means of oil. And remember, we're using the best oil in the world, coconut oil from GT, from Guyana really, not GT. Um, so there we go. Right, so that's really going. And the little shrimp are going to help to flavor the whole thing. You're not even going to taste them in there. They're going act to almost, act almost like anchovies. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in stock. This could be um, chicken stock. It could be vegetable stock. It could be fish stock. I don't want to make it too fishy, so I'm actually using chicken stock. You can use vegetable stock. You're probably going to get almost the same result, right? And I don't want to give this too, mo mo too much water. I want this to just really start cooking, right? I'm going to leave that there to really start blasting up. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. 
Don't want it to burn. Okay, I'm going to clear these little babies out of the way. And in the meanwhile, we got plenty to go on with and plenty to do. Okay. Lovely. That's our macro. Right, uh, I'm just going to give you, show you. It's really easy to fill it. You don't, you know, you can do all this at home by yourself. You see, you just get in there. Right, and you come right through. Let me put this open before I knock it over. Boom. Right, you do the same thing for this side. Different fishes are different. Some of them got a really strong side bone and everything, but not with macro. It's very central. Oh, this, right? Right, so you're good there. And now this is for, well, you can take some of that out. But this, this is for the cats, or you can make stock out of it. But a great thing to do is that you still got some kind of like fresh meat on there. And you want it to go into the, the, um, the bean stew. It gives it a really nice flavor, right? Just make sure it doesn't have bones in it because this really should be boneless, right? So I'm going to put that back there. Stick that over here. I like this is what I'm saying, you see? Beautiful. Okay. Now, you're probably going to have a, a central bowl there in the middle and then one where you got the guts in the belly which forms the frame like we've got um, ribs and things like that and then you're going to have some residual ones that are on the back which is like the backbone so what we're going to do is just do a little incision here then you do another little incision there on either side and then you just go in here and you grab it and you pull out pretty much all the bones. It gets softer near the back, right? Then you cut out the ribs of the fish, which is this. Yeah, but don't go too deep because you want to save as much meat as possible. Again, none of this gets wasted because you just use it for fish stock. Right, voila. Beautiful. And I'm going to search this because I don't, you know, I hate throwing away anything. Oh my gosh. I'm so Guyanese. Um, right. Let us. That's good. No, nope, that's got bones in it. We need to leave that baby alone. Right. So, and then cut off the bit that's near the head fin because all the bones are there. So you get this. And that is what you will get a boneless macro piece, right? I'm going to do exactly the same thing for this one. Do the incision in the middle. Right. Do the incision in the middle. Vodum! Yeah, the whole thing wants to come out, you know. Oh, jeez. Come on. And then you just, whoop. Pull it out. Pull it out. Lovely. Right. All right, most of the bones stop there. Take out the backbone. You can see where those bones are there. All right, that's beautiful. Let me turn this down a little bit. You is cooking a little too fast, man. Okay, good. All right, we're good. So, All right, and it's really easy to check for the bones. All you have to do is just rub it along the skin, and you can go. Oh, that area has got some bones in it. I mean, I'm doing this really fast, but what you, it takes a little practice, but it doesn't take that much practice. You get to know the anatomy of the fish that you're actually cooking, especially if it's your favorite fish, right? And you don't have to take the bones out. I just, sometimes you like something to be a little bit more presentable at the table, easy to eat. Nobody has to think you can keep the lights down low. Oh yeah. And <laughs> you get everything. So that's a beautiful blood am that's going to be what i'm going to um to i'm going to i'm going to pan fry yeah welcome to the world of the singing
nation. We gon' make you sing and you taste God's bread. Run up from a ruler over the east coast, but we stay the east bank shore to judge down the city. Okay, so I, you know what? I'm just going to turn these babies back on. Oh my gosh, this looks like it needs a bit of relax in there. So let's put the rest of the red, the, the, the white wine in there. Yes! This is like proper, like deep, deep, deep Creole, right? It's either the red wine or the white wine, you know? I'm telling you, French mix with the African and all the other things, the Indian, really before. Anyway. I'm just putting these here. What I'm gonna do? If if you guys know what we do is don't you if you just want the flavor, you just do a little incision and leave the stock on so everybody gonna recognize that the thing is actually in there. Otherwise, some people could have problems. Okay, <laughs> with the bay leaf and look at that being stew, and it's like all cooked in the wine. But that's looking good, right? We got to get on, we got to do our, get our, our fish on, right? Now, I want to do this thing in nice little bits. I remember this, the skin is on here, right? So, right. Right, and then we just do this. Beautiful. So, out of like a whole fishing, you get, you get some like a little bits. What I'm going to do is these little bits here. We're gonna throw in there, right? So let's get number one, number two, number three, and then we cut this in half, and then you get four and five. Cause you only want bits, you want a little bits to the fillet, right? We're good to go, baby, right? Now I have here a little bit of garlic salt. Which I want just a little bit on there. I like to season my fish. Sometimes I don't because what you're eating with it is, it's got enough seasoning. But like in this case, definitely I want to do, do like a little seasoning thing, right? Okay. Let's rock this baby. I'm going to turn these off. So. So. Um, where oh brother rainbow okay there we go get the oil in there cover the surface oh that's angry that's what we want that's what we want that's what we need huh oh juice all right okay there we go it will crump up it doesn't really matter when you're doing kind of like you know halibut and stuff like that you gotta make sure that you slit the top to make it so it doesn't do that but it doesn't matter with this in fact the, it doing that when it does this it less of it is actually on the pan so what it does it just crisp up the skin and doesn't burn the fish so it's actually a good thing that's actually happening i'm gonna add just a little bit of water to this because i think we've had enough wine in this don't you think okay lovely lovely and then i'm gonna all these little bits of fish that's left over that's going right into there with the beans right and we're not cooking this for long you know right so both of these can be finished at the same time and i love the thing about beans is oh god that just hit me um, they've got, it's like they've got this natural thickness, right? And the pepper that's in there is just going to be flavoring it, not making it too hot, which is a real shame if you do that. Right, turn these down. We got crispy Pepsi happening. Look at that. And you see how you're getting that beautiful white flesh? Look. You can have this for starch, you can have for main course, depending on how much you eat. Just eat double if you want more, right? But like good food, it's mostly about the flavor. The quantity, you can decide about. But you got to get the flavor. That's all you learn at the cook. You got to get the flavor first. Look at that. That is just an incredible thing. 
Boom. See? Right. Just let me clean this off a little bit. Move this out here. And then I will be ready to take that off because I'm going to be ready to plate up. Right, 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 right. Let's put it in the thing right there. Fantastic. I, you don't really need to do the cloth with this one because the uh, macro is, it's got its natural oils and everything like that and actually it stops it from absorbing too much um, oil and stuff like that but I am just a little bit too finickety sometimes because you want it just lovely nice and soft with beautiful crispy skin look at that you put those on the side and you just let those babies rest Fantastic. So, fantastic. So, that is our macro. Yeah, okay, that's pan fried macro. That's already ready. We're just waiting for our bean sauce to thicken up a little bit. We are really not very far away, I'm telling you. I just need to, for that to thicken up, that's going to take another five minutes. And then we will be ready to plate up. Oh, look at what's happening. You get that beautiful. So we've got our casserole or bean casserole done. This is our fish. I'm telling you, this is beautiful vegetable protein. It's all flavored, real Guyanese style flavor. You know, lots of garlic, you know, and it's cooked in a white wine sauce. So it's just got a very, very, very lovely flavor, right? So what we're going to do is plate this up. And in order to do this, I'm just going to, it's never going to stay together, but I just want to have a little control of it. We're going to put some of our casserole in there. All right. All right. This is the best bean, the best vegetable protein that you can get. Okay. We'll just put it right there. Okay. Just bring that over there like this. And on this side, you're going to take out this, the queen mother. Yes. All right. And here, we're just going to clean it up a little bit. Yes. Now, I think that looks quite presentable. Um, now we're going to get Miss Jessica to come up and try this and tell us what the word is out there. Okay. This is our pan fried mackerel with a white bean or cannellini beans and uh, black eyed peas. So, Miss Jessica, I know you're around. I'm here. I can sense you. Hi, everybody. Okay. Get stuck in. Get I'm, stuck in. Okay. I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> we all talk about immune boosting. Um, yeah. We need to understand how we achieve that and these foods here are all immune boosting for your system so that if you boost your immune system it's more able to fight you know your covid19 your flus everything else that might be attacking yeah with the omega-3s that are in yeah. here between the beans and so the oily fish if you want to know more about that we've got a series of immune boosting recipes on the youtube and we're going to be featuring a few more of those going forward because I created 76, a spreadsheet with 76 different immune boosting foods that are Guyanese, available locally. And Eon's been 
making these recipes from that. So this is a particular one. I'm really yeah. happy we're doing this yeah. because mackerel is an oily fish, rich in omega-3 and a huge support for your Im immune yeah. system. And the main thing is it tastes real good. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love mackerel. Yeah, I look, really look how beautiful and soft that is. I really, really do. And we should, and it's very inexpensive. You can get it down your local fish market. It's the cheapest fish, actually. One of the cheapest, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's delicious. Yeah. Mm. And you see, and you get all this vegetable protein that that's in this. You get the fish protein. And this, the omega threes that are in both of these things are just mm. spot on, and also it's all cooked in coconut oil, which is the best. You this know, is really healthy. Yeah, really super at healthy. Lunch or dinner, because right. Yeah, you've got your, your carbohydrates are in there, but you've also got yeah. your proteins, and it's extremely. Yeah. And even this, like a little, a little portion would actually fill you up, mm -hmm. believe it or not, because of the beans and and you know, and also you got the really pretty amazing flavor that goes along with so it's very satisfying so please you know, think about please try stuff like this what we eat. Yeah. yeah we always maintain that and if we're careful about our food choices and we have no excuse here in diner because we have a plethora of fantastic foods available for us yeah. here yeah yeah all fresh and incredibly good for you so think about you know we're going to be doing more of these um, recipes because it's exciting. Oh, yeah. Really exciting. And, um, yeah, so thanks to all of you. Okay, and thank you to TVN. Thank you guys for tuning in. And please join us again on our next Singing Chef Adventure. Adventure. Thursdays <laughs> and Sundays, 8.30. Yes. On the Guyanese Critic Facebook. Just scroll down and look to videos. Right, and then it all gets put onto YouTube. So if you miss it, you can see it all again. Okay. So love you guys and, and all the recipes, all the ingredients and stuff like that are there. Um, so please, we'll see you next time. This is a very, very exciting journey and I'm glad you, you, you're on it with us. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Welcome to the world of the singing show. We're going to make you sing and you taste goes away. From the Palmer Road or River to the East Coast, from the East to the East Bank, Georgia to Georgetown. Now this one is, we're searching, we're still searching for Miss Sugar Baby, okay? <laughs> Away from
visited Wakapau, it's one of the largest Armenian village, the Lokono village of Wakapau, um, Wakapau being um, a Lokono village like I said. So um, we are all um, more of the Arawak tribe and we all speak the Lokono language and um, we live peaceably and we share everything together we still keep the customs and um, try to carry on the, the heritage that was left to us by our great grandfathers and mothers so Wakapo has come a long long way um, the pronunciation really of Wakapo would be Wakapo Wakapo because that would be actually in Loko the Wakapo so um, we have changed that to Wakapau, Wakapau as the spelling would show, but um, Wakup, Wakup, Wakapua would have been the actual pronunciation of that, like I mentioned, because it carries the P-A-U, which is on the title, um, the title that we do have, W-A-K-A-P-A-U, and not W-A-K-P-O-A. So that should be the original spelling of the name of Wakapo. So Wakapo is made up of several islands, like about 17 islands surrounded by water. And I mean that during the, um, the wet season, these islands are surrounded. It's kind of flooded by water all around. So that, that is basically how it's being called islands but it's connected to the mainland from these small islands within the community there it's attached to the mainland that is again surrounded by Manawaran village on the western side and on the uh, on the southern side you have Akawini village so we are we are kind of um, surrounded by those two villages so we are um, Again, on the eastern side, we have um, boundaries of the Pomeroon River, where the Wakapo Creek flows into that Pomeroon. And as you know, the Pomeroon flows into the Atlantic Ocean. So, we may also have been the first village to have been, um, to have been where we would have had the Lokonos being settling there. Um, if we would have had studies done and, and I mean that we still have artifacts and so on to show that we have had um, people living for hundreds of years there and um, my mom who is now 
she's now passed away at the age of 85. She still remembers the Warows, and that would have been hundreds of years, maybe uh, uh, years ago, when you had a generation of Warows residing in Wakapo. Now, uh, what has happened to Warows is that they would um, they would continually keep moving. They are more nomadic. They they want to keep moving all the way, so they are never settled. And so I believe, in my own opinion, that they once resided in that area um, and um, they left and then the Arawaks came and took over and um, inhabited mainly Wakapo. So like I said now, um, we have like about 2,000 people living there. Wakapo is kind of two-sided. When I say two-sided, it's made up of like the Wakapo end where the river flows directly where it started from that area has like a thousand people and on the other area which is Koraya but it is the same Wakapo but it's called Koraya it's just a branch of the Wakapo Creek we have another thousand living there so um, we just had one school over the years which was the St. Lucian's Anglican School and as you know missionaries came in and established the, the church and so on and uh, Christianized um, of course the indigenous peoples and so on so we just had that St. Lucian's Anglican Church and then after that they also established a, a school St. Lucian's Anglican School now those are, have now changed because you've had Wakapo government school after the government took over and it's now known as Wakapo Primary School so um we all started off at my age now, in the 60s. Um, I attended a school, I completed my primary education there, and most of us did that because that was the school we all attended. Um, after that, we had one school that was very, um, in terms of its population, the school population, they had established that, which was the, um, I think it was like the, the Mora Primary School. Then time there was just a few kids attending that school, like about 50 I would average then. So you had like maybe about one teacher being, um, uh, being um, a teacher at that school. It was a very small school. But after that they developed that school and it became now as is existing there, the Mabel Sandy Primary School, which now has a population of over maybe about 130, 140. Chief, I think yes. this has been really, really interesting. I'd like to just say goodbye for today, but I'd like to just finish this interview for our next show. So we're just going to set, cut it short here now because this is just getting it's really, really interesting. So thank you very much. And then viewers, please tune in to the next programme where you'll see the rest of this interview. Thank so you. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.